Hello, I'm Stuart A. Swerdlow for Expansions.com, and this is a special report on Muammar Gaddafi and related topics. As you know, in the last couple of years, we've had many so-called dictators and terrorists mysteriously captured, killed, destroyed, and vanish. We had uh, Saddam Hussein, then there was Osama, and now Muammar Gaddafi. So the question remains, are these the real people that have been eliminated? Are they duplicates, uh, actors, what have you? You might recall when I spoke about Saddam Hussein, when he was uh, captured, uh, all put on trial and executed, uh, that I said, which one was he? Was it one of the 10 that German television identified as being different Saddam Husseins? And as you recall, there's a movie out now about a man who claims to have been the double for the son of Saddam Hussein. So they're already admitting that they have doubles. So which one was executed? Same thing for Osama, as I told you in a, a recent video, uh, there was no body. So why or how do we know that Osama really was killed that way? I have uh, information that he died back in 2001, as I mentioned in my uh, podcast about it. And so now we have a third. We have Muammar Gaddafi, who was escaping from his hometown of Sirte and heading towards the border of Algeria, where much of his family had taken refuge in the prior weeks and days. But what is not being reported on the news is that there had been an agreement between the rebel group and the Gaddafi uh, entourage to allow him safe passage along this road, this coastal road that went from uh, Sirte all the way to uh, Algeria. It is also known uh, from inside sources that he had literally millions and millions of dollars worth of gold and cash with him. Where did that go? So here we have uh, an agreement between the Gaddafi group and the rebel group for safe passage which is with his entire entourage and belongings to Algeria, and then as he leaves the safety of his uh, town, he's attacked by NATO forces which bomb the caravan, stopping it, and then the rebel forces attack. He seeks shelter, Gaddafi, in a drainage pipe or some kind of um, opening in the side of a hill where he's then captured, dragged out, beaten, sodomized and shot in the head. Then he's laid on top of the trunk of a truck and paraded through town where people uh, call him names, throw things at him, beat him, etc. Finally, he's knocked to the ground, stripped naked, kicked and punched, and then brought to a hospital where he's pronounced dead. Now, regardless of who or what he was, that was videotaped. Why do you think that was videotaped? Well, because just a few weeks before, we were upset that there was no photograph or video of the capture and execution of Osama bin Laden. And so now the government says, well, see, well, we'll give you this video of Gaddafi so that you can have proof that he's really dead. But the video shows a very bloodied person whose features are not exactly defined and the videos are not very clear. So who was it? Was it the real Gaddafi? I don't know. Would he allow himself to be captured like that? Would he have trusted an agreement with the rebel group that he vowed uh, to destroy and, and retake his country? All these questions remain to be answered because they don't make any sense. It is also known from inside sources that Gaddafi was known to dress as a woman, that he was considered to be insane even by those around him and close to him, and uh, that he actually was considered by many of his countrymen to be a very good leader. Under his control, Libya developed the oil fields, people had education, um, they had uh, material things, there was not uh, really poverty in Libya at the time, so why would they rebel against this person? Yes, he was a very strict ruler, and yes, he did uh, eliminate many of his uh, adversaries, but uh, doesn't the United States do that as well? So, uh, what actually happened to Muammar Gaddafi? The body of he and his son 
were placed out in a meat market freezer for people to observe, to prove to them that he was really dead. Then the body was uh, sent for uh, a private uh, burial. But uh, what happened to the rest of his family? What happened to his money? Uh, what uh, did Hillary and Obama know about this agreement with the rebels and then double-crossed them by bombing the caravan so that the rebels could attack. There's a lot of stories here um, and many different versions of them that have to be sifted through and analyzed. We also know that in Syria, um, uh, the president there, Assad, is just as bad, if not worse, than Gaddafi. Why are we not going after him? Well, is it because that Libya had oil that could help uh, the EU and Syria does not have oil? And is it because Syria actually has given the Russians a port uh, in the Mediterranean so that their fleet can have a place to refuel and uh, dock uh, in warm water port? What's going on with Iran? Recent reports now say that Iran does have a nuclear weapon and the capacity to deliver it to various locations in Asia and Eastern Europe. So a lot of questions again remain to be answered uh, and the media will not answer them of course. There are many dictators in this region still. We have the leader in Yemen who's also uh, being propped up uh, by Illuminati forces. Uh, what's going on in Iraq? Um, Iraq is actually supporting Iran, and yet we're giving millions of dollars to Iraq. The rebels in Libya, who are now taking control of the government, are known to have connections to Al-Qaeda and to the Muslim Brotherhood, which are vehemently anti-Israel and anti-US and anti-EU. So why is it that we would support the, the elimination of a leader who had good connections to, the, to Europe and North America for a group that has vowed to destroy those places. Doesn't that uh, make you wonder what's really going on there? So we're going to see a lot more happening here in North Africa and in Central Asia, but we also need to look at South America because Venezuela, you know, the president there, Hugo Chavez, recently had cancer and he went to Cuba in order to be cured of the cancer. He came on very suddenly. He doesn't discuss what kind it was. He just says he had surgery, he had therapies to remove any remaining cancer cells and that he declares himself now to be cancer free. But we also know that the U.S. wants him out of office. He is allowing Russia to have missile bases at the coast of Venezuela that could easily reach to the southeastern United States. And if he allows the Russians to have a fleet here in the, uh, in the uh, southern Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico, that could be a big problem for the United States. We also need to look at uh, Evo here in Bolivia, the uh, very strange leader of uh, that South American country. Evo, of course, is aligned with uh, Chavez and with uh, Russia and with Iran. In fact, a lot of countries in South America are aligning themselves with Iran, and that could be either a setup or an excuse for the United States to do something here in South America so that they can consolidate North America, Central America, and South America and the Caribbean into a gigantic American Union, which is what Hillary has said she would like to see in the next couple of years. In Bolivia, my friends there tell me that there are demonstrations daily, that uh, the leader uh, Evo wanted to put a road through an area that uh, grows uh, coca leaves, and the Indians, the native population, were very much against it. They rebelled, uh, they destroyed the building of the road, and he has backed off and allowed the local people to actually uh, be victorious. So big changes going on in South America. Watch for them. Watch for changes in Central America as well and even in Cuba because we're going to see political upheavals so that the governments of all of these countries realign with the United States and the EU 
for a new global economic unit, which, as we know recently, our very dear Pope has said he would like to see. He wants a global economic and financial system, basically a global government. And that's what the Pope has called for. So in recent times, we've seen the Vatican admit that aliens exist and they are our brothers in Christ and that they support a global government and financial system. Things are not what they seem and the news is not telling you the entire truth. But here at Expansions, we go all over the world to tell you true information and get true world history. So join us again next time for another special podcast, and I will see you then.